Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In today's video, we're gonna see if we can use the new Raspberry Pi 4 as a standard desktop PC. So let's get started. With the Raspberry Pi 4 being more powerful than the Raspberry Pi 3 and the addition of dual monitor capabilities, hopefully we'll be able to use this as a standard desktop PC. I will be testing Raspbian. Now for reference, I'm gonna be using everything contained within the Raspberry Pi 4 desktop kit. I'm not gonna be using any special parts, any modifications. So it's gonna be a stock off the shelf Pi with stock off, off the shelf parts. And if we take a look, it is the Raspberry Pi 4 Model B 4 gigabyte version, which in my opinion is the one to get right now, it is the best version they have out. If you are using the Pi 4 as a desktop PC or trying to use it as one, I would recommend the one with a four gigabyte of RAM. It really will help out in terms of multitasking, in terms of available memory so you can get things done. Now, if you are setting this up for the first time, head over, I'll leave this link in the description below, by the way, head over to this Raspberry Pi website, the official website. It is Raspbian Buster with desktop and recommended software. I'm just gonna do this whole package right here. It's almost clocking in at two gigs and the latest version at the time of this video was released July 10th, 2019. To install this on a micro SD card, I definitely recommend using Etcher. It's free, it's straightforward, it's easy to use. Now you will need to be able to plug your micro SD card into the computer. I use this device right here. It is an Anchor micro SD and SD to USB. I'll leave a link to this in the description below as well. Also, if you are writing to your micro SD, make sure you select the right drive. If you have an external hard drive, for example, plugged in, you may accidentally select that and write the Raspberry Pi image to your external hard drive and erase everything on there. So the easy way to do it is just to disconnect all your USB devices that you're not using uh, and go ahead that way. Or if you know exactly what you're writing to, just double check, double check that you're writing to the micro SD card. So one thing I am gonna do is monitor my CPU usage while I'm here. So I'm just gonna run a command called HTOP. And what that'll do is that'll bring up my CPU usage and all of this information that the average user wouldn't care about. I'm just bringing it up so I can show you how much load the CPU is doing. Now, when it comes down to it, the information that is most important uh, for the average viewer, I would say, is stuff right here in the very top. You can see this is a four core CPU, so you can see core one, core two, core three, and core four. Now this tells you basically how much load each core has right now and we're sitting at idle. I'm not doing anything on the Pi and there really isn't much going on, which is a good thing. And now I'm also going to be monitoring the temperature of the Raspberry Pi and to do this, it's pretty simple. Just type in watch VCGENCMD and then measure underscore temp. And what this will do, I'll just hit enter on this command. You'll see it's gonna keep monitoring the temperature. So it's gonna let me know what the current temperature of the pie is at all times. And I'm doing this just to see how hot the pie gets. So if things start to slow down, I see the temperature up. Maybe it's time that we do need a cooling solution, but we'll see. So the temperature right now, if we take a look, it bounces between 61 and 63 degrees. And that's just idling. So it's a little high for my liking. I haven't really put it under any paces yet, under any load. But at the same time, I don't have any uh, heat sinks attached to the Raspberry Pi. I don't have a fan running on it. If I wanted to run a fan on it, then it would significantly drop the temperature. Now, one test I did forget to do was the boot up test. How long does it take to boot up and is it reasonable to use on a daily basis. So let's do that right now. So I'm just gonna go shut down because I did forget to do this. I'm gonna shut this Raspberry Pi right down. I'm gonna unplug it, plug it back in and get it going. So I am recording using my Elgato. So I'm just gonna unplug the Pi, plug it back in and hopefully this boots up relatively pain-free and quick. So we'll just take a peek right above me. You can see the loading, the loading screen, I guess you could call it. So it is loading up. Everything looks okay so far. Well, I guess you can't really see anything. Uh, let's see if the Elgato picks it up. Yeah. So really that doesn't take long to boot at all. I would say it's extremely comparable to a Windows PC using an SSD on Windows 10. Uh, this passes the first test of booting up. It boots up very quick and ready to go. So I've got everything monitoring again. I did run an update and basically update 
everything on the pie. I would definitely recommend doing that. I'll leave the command in the description below as well once you get your pie up and running. Now one of the first things I want to do is browse the internet. Now if I go to my internet browsers, the only one that's available right now is Chromium Web Browser, which is very similar to Google Chrome. I do prefer Mozilla Firefox, so I'm going to install that. Now to do that, I have to open a terminal window and I'll type in sudo apt install firefox esr that should do some loading here i'm watching my cpu cores being in use i'll say yes and it should install the dependencies and firefox and i can see it installing right now it's not really doing a whole lot to my cpu so installing web browser right now this test is going okay. It's staying at a constant 63 degrees. My CPU cores aren't overly overloaded and everything seems to be going okay right now. So this is a very good test just to see how a program installs and it's a pretty simple one, just Firefox. Okay, now Firefox is done installing. If I go into my start menu here, go to internet, I can see Firefox ESR. So let's open that up. While it's opening, I'm going to monitor CPU processes here, and holy smokes, it uses quite a bit. Okay. Um, is that just to load it up, or is it going to stay that high? No, it's just to load it up. Okay, good. I was worried that this was going to really bog down the system, but it's not. So we're doing okay so far. The temperature's up to 64, 65. That's still okay. Uh, let's close this tab. Let's go to YouTube and try to watch a video. So I'm gonna to go to youtube.com slash uh, everyone's favorite channel here. Let's go to uh, this random YouTube user, Mr. Sujano, and see how this works. So loading this up right now, I'll keep an eye on my CPU usage. And I am only using one monitor because I can only capture footage from one monitor at a time. So instead of you wondering what I'm doing on the side, I've just got everything up right here using one monitor. But yes, you can use two monitors with the Pi and yes, it does work. So I'm gonna go into my one video here that I think is in 1080p. Most of them I do are in 720p. This one should be in 1080. So obviously the advertisements are loading. I did increase the screen you saw a bit of time there before the advertisements readjusted. So let's just take a quick peek here. And if I take a look at the settings, I'll go to HD, autoplay, 720p. So it looks like it's booting up okay. So it's auto right now at 720p. And I'll skip ahead and I'll keep it. Oop. Oh, we crashed. Let's restart Firefox. Okay, so it did crash. Maybe Firefox isn't quite up to par. Maybe I should use Chromium. Ah, we'll just use Firefox for the time being. So let's try this again. So it's just reloading the video here. We'll keep this. It's at 720 right now. The temperature is, ooh, the temperature's high. Temperature's at 77 degrees. At 80 degrees, it starts throttling. Looking at my processes, you can see all four cores right now are almost maxed out. Now the video is slightly, ever so slightly jerky. It's not completely smooth. Uh, if I bump this up to 1080, let's see what it does. So bumping this to 1080, and you can see this Pi cannot really handle the video. It is really, really struggling to process this. All four cores are almost maxed out. My temperature is at the throttle zone, so it's not handling it very well. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna plug a fan in to see if that helps at all. All right, so I did just stick a fan on top of the Pi. It's quite literally a fan from another case, so we'll see how that goes. I can see the temperatures going down right away. So I will make the observation that if you are doing complicated things on the Pi, like for example, trying to watch a lot of video or stream video, you will need to cool it in some way, shape or form. And whether that's through 
passive cooling like a heat sink or a flerk case or active cooling like for example through a fan then either option should help you out. So it's already got this down into the 60s again, all the way back from 82. So that's helpful. And I can confirm that if you are trying to use this as a desktop PC and multitask or you know watch video, you should definitely look at some form of cooling. Now, if we quickly take a peek here, I'm gonna minimize this out of the way, or actually just, yeah, minimize it out of the way here. This is at 1080p, I can see my CPU is still struggling so everything's pretty much maxed out at this point the video is not that smooth and this is 1080 so i'm going to scroll back in the video a little bit to lose the buffering uh, then i'll switch this back to 720p and see if it handles it better now that i am cooling it so now that i have some cooling on here hopefully the 720p shouldn't be as jerky so let's just give it a second here to load a little bit and uh, I can still see some screen tearing. It's not quite perfect. So it looks like it's still struggling a little bit. Let's pull up that resource monitor again. I'm looking at the temperatures. I'm in the 60s, so that's still great. That's not a problem. All four cores are again are almost maxed out. They're, they're pretty up there in usage. So let's go back to the video here. Uh, I can still see screen tearing. It looks like it is struggling just a bit. And this isn't even full screen. I wonder if I bring it to full screen, if it'll do the exact same. Ooh, you can really see it chugging along here. Okay, so this is not smooth at all. Uh, I wouldn't recommend 4K at all at this point. This might change in the future too with encoder coding and stuff. Don't forget the Pi 4 is still very early. But this is looking pretty rough. Maybe this is a Firefox thing. Let's try, let's try Chromium here. So I'm gonna close out a Firefox. I can still see some screen tearing there. So it does look like it's struggling a little bit. Uh, let's skip ahead to where I'm moving the camera around a little more. It looks like it's handling it actually better than Firefox did. So maybe Chromium is better on the Pi here. Let's take a look at my cores. They are considerably lower so there's a big difference between Chromium and Firefox. That's very interesting. So it looks like Firefox is not as optimized for the Pi as Chromium is. And I'll take a look at my temperature here too. It's probably gonna be a lot better. Now we're at 53, so 52. And that is again with a fan on it, which I would probably recommend uh, considering how much we're using the CPUs. So we're, we're running at about 50% here. And this is in 1080p. So I would definitely say it is struggling ever so slightly, but Chromium works a lot better than Firefox. So if you are doing some internet browsing or internet watching, I'll flip this back to 720. And this is, this is pretty good. Um, I would definitely say it, it's not perfect. There is a bit of struggle I can see here. Uh, but at the same time, it's running significantly better than Firefox did. So right away, if you're doing video things, uh, I would stick with Chromium. And let's say if you're like me and you like to multitask, let's open a few tabs here. So now I'm on Twitch. I'm going to go watch a Twitch stream and see how that goes. So I'm going to use A4 Andre. I'll leave a link to his Twitch in the description below. He's a really cool guy. He's got a great stream. So let's check him out and see how everything goes. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a look at the quality here that it's automatically put me in. So if you go to settings, quality, it is sitting at 720p, 60 frames a second. So that's not too bad. And I can see things are going pretty good right now. So really not too much of an issue. I have two other tabs open. I've got mid video paused here for my YouTube channel, just another static page on my YouTube channel. And this 720p stream, everything seems to be going pretty good. If we take a look at the temperature of the PC right now, it's sitting at 51 degrees. I do have a fan on it. Uh, let's take a look at my CPU cores. And again, I'm pushing them, but not too bad. So everything's running okay at this point. So if you are watching YouTube, want to browse in multiple tabs, if you want to stream, 720p right now seems like the way to go. Okay, so Mr. Belb is up, A4 Andre is up. Most streams are running no problem. 
So I have a YouTube video right now running at 720p. I have a static page. I have one Twitch stream playing at 720p. I have a second Twitch stream running at 720p. So those three things are running at the same time concurrently right now. I also have a Word document up, which has very important text that you should read, as well as a Calc document here, which is an Excel sheet. So really all of these things up and running, basically I would say you're, you can multitask with the Pi. The CPU usage is high, it bounces between high and low, but that's completely expected considering it is just a Raspberry Pi. But everything seems okay. There's not really a whole lot of slowdown. It's completely acceptable in my mind. And if you are trying to use the Raspberry Pi as a daily driver, I would say if your needs are pretty basic, maybe some YouTube, some Twitch streaming, watching videos, then definitely the Raspberry Pi is a contender. There's light web browsing, no problem. Text documents, Excel documents, no problem at all. Now, if you want to use the Raspberry Pi for gaming, I just recommend purchasing a second micro SD card and putting RetroPie on that. And then that way you would have RetroPie, which is an excellent operating system for retro gaming. And you would have your second SD card for your Raspbian for your daily driver computer. So I just have a tiny little fan on the GPIO pins. I don't even have it mounted correctly. I'm just gonna lift up the Pi and show you. So you can see right here, this is the little fan that I am using. It's off of a different case altogether. And I literally just have it sitting on top like this uh, during the testing. So my CPU did get hot because I was running so many things at the same time. I would say definitely that it's very, very plausible that you will experience some slowdown if you tr are trying to do all of this stuff at once on the Pi without any form of cooling. So I would recommend some form of cooling. Fans are very cheap for the Pi, very inexpensive, and I'll also leave a link to one of those in the description below. Anyways, that's all I've got for today. So if you liked the video, leave a like. If you didn't like the video, leave a like, hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Let me know if you plan on using a Raspberry Pi in the comments below or would like me to check out something else with the Raspberry Pi to see if it's suitable for you. Thank you everyone, take care.